Robots Radio presents... Fresh Tomatoes, the movie podcast. Hey, I can look at myself naked. Are you stoned or something? They tried stoning me, my dear. It did not work. He likes to create his own sauce. Well, did you sleep with a man who also slept with Mom and Grandma Catherine? What? You slept with Dad? All right. Which one of you sardines called this meat? Whatever, Major Loser. Let the party begin! Hello, and welcome to Fresh Tomatoes, the movie podcast. The podcast that likes pina coladas and dancing in the rain, <laughs> and always, always wears a Hawaiian shirt. That's Simone LaRue. And that's Chad Echowitz. How are you, Chad, on this fine, hot summer's day for you? You know what? I am good. I've spent the day at the beach. I've got oh. a luau later. It's oh. going to be just, you know, Kontiki te- fantastic. Mm-hmm. How, how are you on this fine summer's day? Oh, so good. I started drinking at 10 a.m. after a hearty breakfast of tropical fruits, <laughs> and I have just been in bliss. It's, that's, this is the dream life. We're living it. Mahalo. Mahalo. It's, it's so wonderful. Obviously, we're lying. We're just stress <laughs> balls of stress stress, but it feeds into the aesthetic of what this episode is, which is what, Simone? Vacation episode. Oh, yeah. Sometimes you just need to dream about the tropical getaway you can't afford nor can do because of a global pandemic. Yep, that's, uh, mm. yeah, yeah, but we can all dream. That's the one thing they can't take away from us is dreaming. <laughs> yet. <laughs> yet. They will. They will. What is so your, my... like, wait, wait, wait. You're at a tropical resort, right? What is your yeah. ideal day? Okay, well, that was going to be very similar to my, that was going to be very similar to my question. My my question would be more general, which I will ask after I've answered your question and got your answer. Right, so at a tropical resort, perfect day. Right, so wake up whenever I want, Uh obviously. Obviously. I'm going to set an alarm. That's insanity. Head down, have a lovely breakfast. We're talking fruits. Mm. We're talking toast. We're talking egg. We're talking croissants. Mm -hmm. You know what's really nice? Croissant. Salmon, a little bit of cream cheese. What a breakfast. Yes, girl. A little bit of scrambled eggs. Mm -hmm. Yes, please. And of course, because I'm on holiday, a mimosa. We then stumble (laughs) down to the beach, open that book right up, and we just bake in the sun for a good Mm. until about midday when it Mm -hmm. goes a little bit too hot. Yeah, you don't want it to get too hot. Yeah. No. Head back inside, uh, get, take one of those really nice sort of vacation showers you mm-hmm. know the one completely changes your life uh have something to eat probably a burger because you know what on holiday Ugh, okay. uh and then and then just spend the rest of the day alternating between the pool the beach and drinking mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. it it's bar beach pool that's mm-hmm. that's all i'm doing for the rest of the day until i pass out at about six at uh, six p.m oh lovely yeah what is what is your what is your perfect uh, tropical okay. vacation day i might cry so while excited. i describe it <laughs> Because I need this so bad. Okay, mm-hmm. I don't want to wake up too late because, like, I'm quite a morning person. So I mm-hmm. want to say wake up, like, just after the sun's come up, whenever that is. Mm-hmm. Go, like, cheeky stroll on the beach. If it's mm-hmm. a little hot, what if I do a little swim first thing in the morning? Beach is empty, <laughs> water's fresh. Take a quick shower. Go to breakfast. Mm-hmm. Breakfast is definitely lots of tropical fruits, some mm-hmm. poached eggs, maybe Ooh, a yeah. bagel. Oh, yeah, that sounds um, good. And then breakfast pastries, which, like, they never <laughs> taste as good as they look at a buffet, but I still have no, them. Of course, you have to. You got it. You got it. And, you know, let's do a mimosa. Yeah. Fuck it. We're on vacation. <laughs> then, again, much like you, chill on the beach, read a book that I don't care about, swim mm-hmm. a little bit. Once it gets too hot, you go back, shower off all the sunscreen and salt. Mm-hmm. Have a vacation nap. Oh yeah. You are relaxed. About the you have nap. no responsibilities in this world. Wake oh, up at man. about four, get dressed, feel real cute. You've skipped lunch because you had a big breakfast. <laughs> it's now four four PM. It's cocktail <laughs> time. You're having cocktails on the beach. You're watching the sun start to go down. You have a lovely four-star dinner. At the resort, oh, yeah. maybe mm, I want lots of fish. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, have a of lovely course. dessert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe a creme brulee. Lots of perfect, beautiful wine with that. Mm-hmm. Finish it off sitting on the beach under the stars. Glass of chilled whiskey in your hand. Go to bed at a reasonable hour. 
I love it. I love it. I'm so excited for our first show in Hawaii. Oh and my God. we just have, like, we're just going to, it's going to be great. We'll arrive in the island uh-huh. and then we'll just diverge. Like, the only <laughs> times that we'll see each other is essentially meals. Uh, book reading, <laughs> m- meals, and then book reading. But I love yeah. the fact that both of us also go to bed at a respectable time. Mm. <laughs> mm. So it's not like a party for us. The party is the day. And then we're in bed by like seven. And it's just perfect. Yeah. What a I win. I feel like you join me on the beach for a cheeky, a cheeky uh, post-dinner drink. To be fair, if I'm still like alive then, absolutely, mm. I would come and join you. But yeah, we, I mean, we just wouldn't see each other. We, by this point. Yeah. Oh yeah, we would see each other at the live shows and be like, what have you been doing? <laughs> I'm just slathered in sunscreen the whole time because I'm trying to stop <laughs> aging at any cost. Um, mm-hmm. But just also great tan on the rest of me. So pale, oh, pale yeah. face, <laughs> golden body. It'll be great. I'm, I'm, I'm so excited. Thrilled. Yes, All of our it. shows are going to so, be in tropical places. <laughs> exclusively tropical, uh, tropical places. It's never going to be like Colorado or Denver. No, where it's just fuck you bubble. guys. Yeah. <laughs> So my question was more general. It was yes. sort of what is your perfect vacation? Is it a oh. tropical beach or is it sort of skiing? What is what Ooh. is your perfect vacation? I'm a very uh, nerdy traveler. I really mm-hmm. like, like, I want to see the landmarks. I want to go to the churches. I want to mm-hmm. go to the castles. I want to go to the museums. Um, when I was in Kenya, God, months ago that feels like years the first place Mm -hmm. i went was the national art gallery because i think that's amazing i want to learn about the cultures i want to eat the local foods i want to talk to local Mm -hmm. people and then i main thing though vacation nap oh i can't believe i forgot it it's fucking sacrilege my ideal vacation is somewhere with lots of architecture culture history Mm -hmm. which i mean is most places let's be honest it's warm um and the food is bomb yeah yeah that is that is the dream and there's a nice relaxed friendly culture too mm. that's like the perfect trifecta yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. No, what about agree. you like it's it's a real tough one because like my two my two favorite holidays that i've ever been on are like so drastically different yeah. like i loved mozambique for like oh, the yeah. chill vibes that we had of just like the best food the best mm-hmm. drink the best sun just like such a great time that was amazing but then the other one was that month in italy where i was literally just going from city to city looking at all the churches looking at the museums looking at all that stuff and and so it's just like i I genuinely don't know which vacation you have to budget for both right Mm, like mm. especially if you've got like say a week like you want a couple Mm. days where you're like you know going from place to place learning being a traveler and then other days where you're like doing fuck all yeah yeah you gotta have that balance i think like a trip that is just pure like do 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 we have to go Exhausting. and do all these things it's just like you leave you finish the holiday and you're just like god damn yeah that was a that was that was not a holiday that was just <laughs> an extended <laughs> study period yeah. <laughs> with more walking <laughs> <laughs> exactly exactly um so should we talk about these two yeah. movies that we're doing this week what are we Absolutely. what are we what are we doing so we are doing uh, Couples Retreat, the mm-hmm. Vince Vaughn classic, and Heartbreak Kid, yes. which is a movie that was made. Yes, it was. It was a Ben Stiller who stood in front of a camera for an hour and a half and um, very much like the name suggests, broke our hearts. It's, yeah. Oh. yeah. Anyway. anyway, what are you drinking? All right. Today I have gone back to a uh, an old family favorite, uh, which almost killed me during our <laughs> um, live our live uh, birthday celebration. I am again drinking Jack Daniels, but the apple uh, oh, apple infused whiskey, and Lovely. I've just put a little bit of appetizer in it just to give it a little bit yeah. of a, a fresh zazz. Oh, that's fun. Yeah, yeah. What are you drinking? I am drinking a white wine. Again, I cannot say where or how. I got it, mm-hmm. um, of course. but I obtained it. I'm proud um, of you. Mm, I'm supporting local industry. Yes, yes, you are. You bootlegger. You absolute pharmaceutical. I'm living my best twenties life. It's fantastic. I envy you. I say it every week, but I do envy you for your <laughs> your bootlegging ways. I just have friends in low places. <laughs> Yes, another name, of, uh, another T-shirt that we can that we can eventually <laughs> sell. 
<laughs> so I guess that means I go first with the yeah, yeah, yeah. well, which is For good sure. because then we can just get Heartbreak Kid out of the way and we don't have to worry about it. Okay, Chad, talk me through this plot. Right, I shall. Okay, Eddie, played by Ben Stiller, is just a down on his luck kind of guy. He has recently split from his fiance, and as a 40 year old bachelor, is worried that he will end up dying alone. One day, after attending his ex fiance's wedding, he stumbles into this lovely young lady named Lila, played by Marlon Ackerman. That's how you pronounce her name, right? Marlon? Marlon? Marlon. Marlon? Marlon Ackerman. I say stumbles into her because he basically attempts to stop her from getting robbed and ends up getting pepper sprayed by, by the thief. Lila thanks him for his efforts and they go on their separate ways. A few days later, Lila winds up at Eddie's sports shop looking to buy a fleece. Eddie, thinking this is his last chance of love, asks her out for a drink. After that, they start dating on the reg and things look pretty sweet. That is, until Lila tells Eddie that she has to move away. She's an environmental researcher, and the company she works for is asking her to move for research. They've only been dating for six weeks, but Eddie is concerned that he will never find another woman like this. He asks if there's any way that she could get around this and stay with him in San Francisco. But Lila says that the only, uh, this would only be allowed uh, if she were to be married. So Eddie decides to marry her. They get married and, for their honeymoon, they decide to head down to the car by St. Lucas for a delightful beach holiday. This is where stuff starts to get really wacky for Eddie. Lila won't stop singing in the car. She's an absolute sexual deviant in the bedroom. She gets super seasick. And with Eddie's, uh, and, uh, sorry, and while Eddie is quite outgoing, uh, she would prefer to just chill on the beach. He starts to think that he has made a terrible mistake. When they arrive in Cabo, things only get worse for Eddie. He finds out that not only is Lila a volunteer environmental researcher, which means that he, they will be living off of his income exclusively, she has also thousands of dollars in debt due to a cocaine addiction she used to have. This upsets him greatly. Don't forget her On deviated her first... septum, Chad. Well, I mean, it's it a was huge so plot point. <laughs> I hated it so much. I hated it. Yes, she has a deviated system from all the cocaine she's been doing. On their first day at the beach, Lila suffers from some seriously incredible sunburn, which basically incapacitates her for the rest of the trip. While she is stuck in the hotel suite, Eddie goes out to try and enjoy himself. That's where he meets up with Miranda, played by Michelle Monaghan. This is this, uh, she's the super cool, down-to-earth lady from Mississippi, and Eddie pretty much falls in love with her immediately. However, he does not tell her that he is, on, he is in Cabo on his honeymoon or that he is married. The rest of the movie is basically Eddie running around with Miranda and trying to navigate his way around lying to his wife and lying to Miranda simultaneously. Eventually, he decides to break it off with Lila. After some confusion, Miranda finds out that Eddie is married and she is pissed off. Lila is equally pissed off and decides to burn all of his money as well as his passport. So he is stuck in Cabo with no way to get home. After sneaking through the American border multiple times, Eddie makes his way to Miranda to try and win her back with an impassioned speech. It fails because she is now married to someone else, and unlike a complete douchey sle sleazebag, she doesn't just go off with some other random dude. He heads home, but realizes that there is nothing left for him in San Francisco anymore, so he decides to make, it the, uh, make the move to Cabo to become a perma-vacationer. A year and a half later, while enjoying his new life, Miranda pops up. She's back in Cabo for a family reunion. She still has feelings for Eddie, and so they decide to have dinner that night to see how things go. In the final moments of the film, we see Eddie speaking to his new wife, played by Eva Longoria, and how he needs to speak to her about something later on that night. Hit, hit, nudge, nudge. The end. What's your cliffhanger? I think it's just that sigh. That sigh was exactly how <laughs> we should all feel about this movie. Uh, but no, my cliffhanger is this one, which is the scene where uh, Eddie finds out that she is a volunteer and completely fucking loses his shit at her, which seems insane, right? Like, like I mean, it just encapsulates the whole vibe of this film, right? I mean, this movie is, I mean, it's upsetting on so many levels, but it's especially weird because it tries to paint Ben Stiller as sympathetic and mm -hmm. like, we're supposed to be like, oh yeah, your new wife is such a bitch for not telling you about her hard past as a cocaine addict. And mm -hmm. like, you know, the fact that you guys never discussed finances before is somehow her fault. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Like, it's, it's, it's ridiculous how we're supposed to feel sorry for him. They've been dating for six weeks, and he doesn't know shit all about her. Like, yeah. you're telling me that that subject of her being a volunteer and having no money has never come up before. The fact that, her, like, 
as you have said, the fact that she has a deviated septum and a su- septum is such a big part of this movie, but they've never eaten out before yeah. or anything like that where it's come up before. That's insane. And then finally, like, it's just, it's the fact that she doesn't have any money. Has, like, has she never, like, paid for anything? And then yeah, he's exactly. just thought that he was being gallant. Like, And it even makes if you no were, sense. like, doing a quickie wedding, like, surely you'd be like, okay, lightning round, like, let's talk about these important things before we get married. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's such a great scene in um, How I Met Your Mother when Ted uh, starts dating, um, I think it's Bianca, I can't remember her name, the the cupcake maker, the baker. Yes. And basically, like, he... he, he um, he, he feeds her something that she's allergic to and immediately that night they sit down together and he's like right tell me everything I need to know everything about yeah. you so that this kind of thing doesn't happen again so the fact that like as soon as he finds out that she is completely like seasick and cannot go on a boat why the fuck would he not just go right I don't actually know shit all about you yeah. I need to sit down and, like the first day of this holiday is just you and me going and just hashing this out because yeah. this is ridiculous Yeah, like it makes no sense and then he also acts like a little bitch the whole time like he doesn't stand up for himself at all He's just like, oh, uh, uh, will you stop playing with my nipples? Uh, oh, please. Uh, uh. And then he goes and plays to everyone else. Like, he doesn't try to solve any of yeah. these problems with her. And, like, he's clearly uncomfortable with the sex that they're having, which, like, mm. she comes on a little strong. It's a little hilarious. <laughs> a little hilarious. <laughs> because Malin case. Ackerman is so funny. Yeah, she's brilliant. Um, But, at, like, at no point is he a fucking big boy about it. And, like, hey, can we just have a quick sex talk, like, we can discuss boundaries, and, Mm -hmm. you know, like, things that are totally normal for married couples to have to discuss at some point, like, it just, it's so, okay, let's talk about the most upsetting scene for me, personally, Mm -hmm. you know, besides Mm -hmm. the fact where he, like, casually mentions that he was raped as a child, or, like, besides the fact that the dude who works (laughs) at the resort casually sexually assaults his wife by putting her hand on his penis, like, yeah, hilarious, oh my god, it's always so so funny, funny. it's so funny, do you know what's, the only thing that's funnier is racism, which, like, surprisingly had a very distinct lack of in this film, there's that. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's the scene where he's wanting to go for dinner with um, the other girl's family, and mm. he's like, he essentially gaslights his wife um, mm. into like thinking that her wanting to stay in the hotel is his I- is her idea. Mm, mm, like where he's mm. like, no, I told you this. Like just making her doubt everything that she's thinking he's like no i told you like these guys are really important um no you should totally come for dinner that's great oh it's on a boat oh is that a problem for you you know Mm. what yeah it's totally a great idea that you just stay here like it is that is abuse (laughs) yeah yeah i think people don't realize because it's subtle and verbal but like yeah that's gaslighting yeah, And it's like, so upsetting because it's painted as comedy and it's painted as making him sympathetic because, oh, she's crazy. She's not mm. crazy. They're just not compatible. Exactly. Like, like it's, it's just bonkers that we're supposed to feel sorry for this guy. And then I think the most, like, the coup de grace of this whole film is the fact that at the end he's married to Eva Longoria, who is, like, clearly, like, they, they're either in a happy relationship mm. or, yet again, he's being a little bitch and cannot break up with her because, well, yeah. whatever reason. Well, because he's a little bitch. But basically, he's just like, cool, I'm married to this super smoking hot lady. Things are great. Oh, and so Miranda comes back into the picture and now I'm just gonna dump her? Like, this dude is a fucking troll he's awful you know and like i was you know there's nothing wrong with a tragic like a sad ending or like a you know a Mm. not happy ending but like usually even when the ending is unhappy it's because the protagonist is getting what they deserve this guy Mm. never gets what he deserves which is to be Mm -mm. alone forever he's such an asshole if Mm -hmm. i had gotten a horrific sunburn on vacation Mm -hmm. you know i do the whole like oh rudy like you should go like explore like don't worry about me i was a big dum-dum but i wouldn't expect him to do it (laughs) and he wouldn't because he likes me no No, exactly (laughs) you know that's like the thing to do is like okay you know what we'll order room service we'll stay in the hotel room i'll rub your back like rub aloe yeah. into your skin uh we can just watch some movies and like chill on the balcony it's fine 
like yeah, one hundred percent. Like it wouldn't even be a second thought to me. Like no. if me and my 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 wife had like suddenly just gone like on a trip and she's like in so much pain. Like there's so many things you can do in the in 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 a, in a hotel room. You like you'd build a blanket for. Yeah. You'd make it, like, the most wonderful vacation. You wouldn't just fuck off and leave your your new wife to be by in herself. Distress. That's insane. Yeah, that's horrible. And then he finds out that the dude's like again sexually assaulted her. <laughs> mm. Mm. And he's just like, oh man, nothing. that's not cool. Like, I'm not advocating for like violence or anything, but I would report him. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. And like, I think, like, like, I guess, like, the reason he doesn't insult uh, assault him or, or like confront him any more than what he did in the film is, you know, obviously because he's a little bitch. But mm-hmm. apart from that, it's the fact that, um, you know, like, like the 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 guy says, he's like, oh, I thought you were open to this since you've been like hanging out with this other chick. And I mean, that's a pretty solid argument, ish. Obviously, yeah, no sexual assault is okay. Please understand that I'm not saying that, and our listeners need to understand that as well. That I'm not saying yeah. no sexual no, no, assault. I'm with you i'm with you but like for this little bitch uh, an argument like that will just take him down and just like stop him from doing anything um but yeah it's it's like this whole movie i i I remember watching this the first time and i thought it was really really funny it's amazing what progress and sort of maturing kind of tells you about things this whole movie the humor relies on you going oh no Mm -hmm. which isn't actually funny (laughs) no no, it's shock humor, which, as yeah. we all know, is not real humor. And then, like, you know, he's convinced that he loves this woman, but it's like, you know, you were also convinced you loved your wife. Like, and your second wife. <laughs> literally a week ago, and now you yeah. hate her. Like, what makes you think you won't discover, like, random shit that irritates you about this woman? Mm-hmm. And you know, you know for a fact he's going to make her move to Cabo. Oh, oh, oh without question 1000 percent, and then she's gonna be unfun for like one day yeah and he's gonna find someone else and then like hook up with her like so without a question fucking, like he's such a like fucking pathetic character you don't feel sorry for him the whole movie Mm-mm. you're just like you're being an asshole to your wife who maybe you could have figured out compatibility with a little bit sooner mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. or else like if you're not sure just let her go yeah exactly Exactly. Like, that's the other thing. Like, he get, he completely gaslights her into staying. Yeah. Like, he's just, like, basically, he, he, he essentially is just like, okay, you have to say it. It's not a case of, oh, do you want to go for yeah. your career? It's a case of, I want you to stay, yeah. so I'm going to marry you. He's like, oh, you vibes. going isn't even really an option. Yeah. Because, yeah. I, you know, I don't want to disparage anyone's career, but he's like, oh, my sporting goods store. Dude. Asshole asshole christ i yeah this movie (laughs) are there nice things that you can say about it i loved the location yeah beautiful Um, the resort seemed great oh it looks amazing i would love to go there Mm. um i think um what's her name uh marlon ackerman is spectacular even though she gets a real rough deal in this film god um i mean her bit were like during the sex scenes she was the funniest like that so was brilliant funny so good um i think the the family miranda's family were just just delightful oh um, yeah i think literally everyone in this film apart from ben stiller was amazing yeah. you know and and yeah apart from that like yeah i mean the homophobia with the little uh twin kids that wasn't cool not super happy <laughs> that they were able to just get that in there mm. but what can you do what can um, you do but There's how about you? Is there is a couple of f bombs in relation to gay men a couple times, yeah. which is so fun in movies. So funny, super great, great. Um, yeah, I think same points as you. Mm-hmm. Malin Ackerman's so funny. I think she was underutilized. If anything, she had to pretend to oh, be yeah. like this dumb, naggy woman, which she wasn't. Um, no. <laughs> Not even a little bit. Not even a little bit. And, you know, she made it work. His dad was okay. Yeah, he was all right. I just, I, I, yeah. This movie is all the worst aspects of early 2000s comedy. Mm. I think it should be the banner of comedy does not age well. This is the prime example of that. It's, I mean, and we've even seen some, like, rom-coms and shit from that year. Like, who, mm. what 
out of touch asshole <laughs> wrote this. Right, right. This is this is the case where like this person should be put on blast. This I'm is actually... a man who is on his third divorce and hates women. <laughs> hates women and it's just like all like he created the saying bitches be crazy yeah. like without a doubt yeah it's oh no it's so it's so upsetting I'm, I'm actually gonna look up who the who the who the director was and who the screenwriter was because this guy needs to be put on blast and it, you know it's a guy um bobby farley and peter farley so the farley brothers oh. the writers are scott armstrong leslie dixon that seems surprising <laughs> Unless it's Leslie like a boy's name. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to have a look now because, again, it needs to be put on blast. Um. Like, you know, I know we really try to find positive aspects of movies and, you know, that's our thing. And we understand that people worked really hard on them and people gave, like, their best performances and, you know, people put effort and heart into this. It's mm. just... Uh, Unbelievable. Okay, so Leslie Dixon doesn't say what gender he is, so we'll just keep keep, keep him gender neutral. But he did Limitless, Gone Girl, um, Look Who's Talking Now, which I guess kind of makes Gone sense. Gone Girl was really good. This, which is surprising. Um, what else? Uh, Freaky Friday. He wrote some of that. Uh, Miss Doubtfire. What the fuck? What happened, uh, dude? Come on, dude. You're better than this. And I mean, uh, dude, in a gender neutral way. <laughs> Uh, Scott Armstrong doesn't look like he's done actually that much uh, in terms of writing uh, The Hangover Part 2, so Road Trip, Beer Pong, Semi Pro, uh, School for Scoundrels. So, yeah, this guy is okay. like, this is on brand for this guy. He is an <laughs> asshole. Uh, and then the directors, Peter Farley, he has done, oh, yeah, there it is. Um, uh, there's something about Mary. He did Green Book. Uh, he, he did Green Book. Very weird guy. I'm very confused. What is by happening it. right now? What? Where did this movie come from? This is so weird. Three Stooges. What is up with this brother combo? Me, myself, and Irene. I'm very confused. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, okay. Well, well, let's let's yeah, let's move on. What's moving your scene? swiftly along. What's your scene that could have saved this? Um, him dying alone in an obscurity. Right, that would be brilliant. Just being like, <laughs> I'm impotent, and then he dies. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Like, just what a terrible, terrible man who needs therapy. Mm, mm, mm. And like, yeah, needs to deal with his own inadequacies, of which there are many. Oh my god. Um, yeah, I, 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 mine, mine was a complete revolution of the final scene where he mm. goes to, Mar like, Miranda pops up and he's like, sorry, I'm actually here with my wife. And I love her very much, and we've been married for a year and a half, and I'm actually very happy. So unfortunately, this can't happen, but thank you so much. If you're still interested, I'm very happy to take you out for dinner, and it will be a completely friendly, just completely mm, platonic He's grown, he's learned. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and then he goes to his wife, and they have a wonderful evening together. Mm. Because Which it's their fucking anniversary. Yeah, yeah. I forgot that it's on their anniversary yeah. as well. This guy is just awful. The worst. Oh, uh, uh. So I'm mm. thinking that you would watch it again every day. <laughs> every day of my life, just to really remind myself of the type of man I want to avoid ever knowing. <laughs> this is this is what you you should sh like schools should show in like sexual health classes to like explain the concepts of like gaslighting and like <laughs> mental abuse. Um, just I, to like you know, yeah. this is like this is also the type of dude that like I find very frustrating as a pretty girl who sometimes likes nerd things <laughs> uh -huh. like this is the type of dude where like you banter back and forth with them for a bit because you're a normal person who can have a conversation mm -hmm. and they're like she is the love of my life she completely gets me there was a oh uh, yeah 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 and it's like no this was a normal conversation with me you just haven't had a lot of normal conversations with pretty with girls, pretty girls. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> you know, and like he like paints this picture of you in his mind and gets mad when you have an opinion. It's always that final bit, isn't it? It's that little caveat yeah. with pretty girls. Mm -hmm. That's uh, that's what does it. Yeah, yeah. I can't, I can't imagine how often that happens. Um, it's singularly upsetting. <laughs> like it must be crazy, and like I feel so bad for like so many people. And I mean, yeah, I used to fall into this category as well. I guess like a I little mean, bit. Like I mean, if a if a if a pretty guilty. waitress was like super nice to me, I'd be like, 
oh yeah, she's into me, not a case of she's just doing her it's job. It's her job to you be know? nice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But the fact is that you grow and you learn that this, mm. <laughs> that this is not the world that we live in. And women aren't just sex things that, you know, immediately like you because you have a meat sausage. And just because you have a nice conversation with a woman probably doesn't mean she's your soulmate. <laughs> no, no. She's just a pretty girl who knows how to make conversation. Like, yeah, that's it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So I want to say, like, well done. Thank you. But we don't, we, we, we just need it. to look away. We, we, we did it. We made it through it. We did this one. Mm-hmm. Okay. Finish, finish us off with an actual good film. Okay. Couples Retreat, you guys. Okay. Couples Retreat centers around four couples. Four? Three. Three. Four. Four. (laughs) (laughs) I wrote a synopsis, totally. (laughs) Okay. Couples Retreat centers around four couples. The first being Dave and Ronnie, played by Vince Vaughn, and your girl, Malin Ackerman. (laughs) Then there is Jason Smith and Cynthia, played by Jason Bateman and Kristen Bell. There is Shane and Trudy, played by Faison Love and Callie Hawk. And there is Joey and mm, (laughs) Lucy, played by Kristen Davis. (laughs) I'm looking at the cast list. (laughs) This is why we fix it in post. (laughs) So, <laughs> Jason, <laughs> shut up. This is why we. This is why we edit. Jason and Cynthia are experiencing marriage problems because they've been struggling to conceive a baby. They ask the rest of their friends if they would be willing to go on a vacation with them to a couple's retreat resort where they'll sort out their issues, try to get to know each other in a fun new light again, and see if their marriage is going to work. If it doesn't, they'll divorce and go their separate ways. Dave and Ronnie are your average couple, married for a while, in love, have a couple kids. Things have gotten a bit stale. They haven't been on vacation in a while. They reluctantly agree to go along. Uh, You also have Shane and Trudy. Shane actually just went through a horrible divorce with his ex-wife, who was apparently the love of his life, um, and is now dating Trudy, who is 20, a child, (laughs) and very active, and makes Shane feel young again. Oh, the other, oh. the other type of awful man. Yeah. And then Joey and Lucy are your typical high school quarterback, high school cheerleader. He got her pregnant at the prom. They got married, stayed together for the kid. Their child's turning 18, and their plan is to split as soon as possible after she graduates. So they stayed together for the kids, which is always healthy. You, I've heard it works out perfectly mm. every single time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Really great for everyone involved. So they go to this couple's retreat, everybody kind of expecting that they'll have a fun time and, you know, uh, Kristen Bell and Jason Bateman will work on their own thing while the rest of them just chill. Instead, they're all told that Monsieur Marcel, played by who else (laughs) but Jean Reno. (laughs) (laughs) The only French actor. Oh, he's fantastic. Monsieur Marcel, who runs the resort, <laughs> insists on them keeping to a strict schedule whereby they have to wake up early in the mornings for couples therapy and other couples bonding activities such as yoga. While they're in therapy, uh, Dave and fucking <laughs> Alan Ackerman, <laughs> Dave and Ronnie, figure out that actually their marriage is stale and they're taking each other for granted. Uh, Shane tries to work through his issues actually with his ex-wife. Trudy's just frustrated because, you know, Shane is old and won't do all the fun stuff on the island with her. Um, And pretty much Joey and Lucy are like, we don't need to work on anything. We're splitting as soon as fucking possible. Um, (laughs) God. Jason and Cynthia, who are the couple that tried to conceive, they're just sort of talking through their frustrations. They're trying to win at therapy, which is a thing that you can (laughs) totally do. (laughs) Um, And they realize that actually Cynthia really resents Jason for constantly, constantly trying to pressure her into conceiving somehow. 
there's a lot of back and forth. There's yoga, there's shark attacks. Um, couples <laughs> go through things. Eventually they try to make their way to Eden East, which is the super fun singles part of the resort to go and have a good time. Things come to a head. Eventually Vince Vaughn and Mullen Ackerman realize they love each other and their bond is stronger than ever. Uh, Jason and Cynthia similarly find the love in their relationship again. Shane actually runs into his ex-wife and realizes that she's the one for him all along and she comes right back to him. Trudy, you know, has a blast on the island. <laughs> and Joey and Lucy, who have spent the last 18 years actively hating each other, realize that they actually like each other and want to be together. <laughs> the end. Wait, you made it through. That was a that's that's a tough one to get through. So, what is your what is your cliffhanger? Uh, my cliffhanger is this one, and it's the couples therapy between Vince Vaughn and Malin Ackerman, where like the mm -hmm. therapist essentially points out that their marriage isn't that great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that I is actually, a great scene. I really like it because my concern with this movie going in was like, you know, mm -hmm. it's going to be the typical like, oh, my wife is such a nag. Um, mm, kind of thing, mm. which it is a little bit, but it's, you know, I think marriage is really complicated and there are a lot of issues that can come out yeah. of a marriage, even if you two are compatible and suitable for each other. And especially when there mm. are kids in the mix, y your relationship kind of tends to fall by the wayside. No, of course. And I mean, um, I think that's quite a natural thing, isn't it? I mean, totally. you know, if you think about the, the, the concept of marriage, and I mean, this is coming from two people who are not married. I know hmm. you've been in a monogamous relationship for, 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 for quite a while now, hmm. and I've had various and multiple <laughs> monogamous relationships that, that have all for clearly not worked out for one reason or another. Um, maybe I'm un unlovable, who knows? But I've got no. experience. That's the point I'm saying is that we've both got experience. But if you think about like the concept of marriage, you're with a single person for like mm. 40, 50, 60 years, which is in a long time. Of course the relationship's gonna fall by the wayside because it's something that you do every day and things yeah. that become like, you don't think of to brushing your teeth as this like exciting experience. Yeah. It's just a thing that happens every day. And the same is the true with relationships. Yeah, and I think, you know, you become used to the other person being there. You start to just accept that they're going to be there mm. forever. Um, I think there's also this element. I remember, um, oh God, years ago when I moved to Cape Town, I was hanging out with my aunt and uncle who um, mm -hmm. had two very small children at the time. Um, and they were getting ready for a date night. I was going to babysit for them. Mm -hmm. And they had like cue cards with discussion starters. And I was like oh, laughing. No. I was like, that's so ridiculous that that's you need so this. Cute. Like, come on, like this is ridiculous. <laughs> and they were like, you don't understand. Like with the kids, we have not had any time to have discussions like this. <laughs> That's so cute, though, that they like, they did the cue cards and everything. Yeah. Oh, that's and so it's, wonderful. Yeah. It, and, like, it just blew my mind that, like, mm. you can get to this point in a relationship <laughs> where you, like, don't know how to have a discussion with your partner that isn't about mm. your children. Um, but that's the thing. They, like, they consume your life. I'm not, like, yeah. an advocate for no children, but they do consume your life. So, like... Your, your conversations are just about them. And I think a lot of parents find that really difficult. Like when all the children leave the net, uh, leave yeah. home is because for like the last 18 years, that's all you've been focused on. And now you've got to relearn this yeah. other person. And that's terrifying. Yeah. Um, so I thought like that was, it was cool that they just looked at these m sort of nuances in relationships. Mm -hmm. Also with um, Kristen Bell and Jason Bateman, where, you know, they loved each other clearly and they wanted their relationship to work, but, like, mm, there's this mm. weird, you know, thing where he's, like, pressuring her to conceive and she's like, I can't control my body. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, you know, there's this weird friction and resentment, which I thought was mm -hmm. really, really interesting and it was surprising from this movie. Mm. I think when you see, like, the cast list, you're just, you, you think it's just going to be, like, a weird romp. Yeah, but they actually hit on some really important and hard-hitting issues for a lot of couples that need to be addressed. And I think especially with that generation, they're so afraid of like couples counseling and and you know things yeah. being wrong in their relationship. Yeah, that it was like a really nice look, and I hope that a lot of that generation and and our generation even have looked at this movie and been like, right, okay, this is actually a pretty healthy thing to do. Yeah. We should all be doing this, even if your relationship feels pretty perfect. It's a good idea to just have Check a third in. party neutral person and just be like, yeah. this is what I assess your relationship. 
Yeah. Totally. My plan um, when I get married is to do couples counseling beforehand. Like not because anything is wrong. Right. Okay. Just like, you know, if there are any communication issues or other issues, mm. I want to know about them now rather than mm. in 10 mm. years if we're trying to fix something that's already broken. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and yeah. And I have a friend of mine who moved overseas with her boyfriend and before they moved, mm -hmm. they also went to therapy together. Just like to talk about like, this is how we cope with stress. This is how we communicate like, mm -hmm. and really ease that um, transition for them as a couple. Right. No, that's a really good yeah. idea. And that's and there's like, nothing that's, wrong that's with that. Smart. No, absolutely. I think it's a good, you know, you, you do an, uh, you, you do a service on your car every year. Yeah. Like why wouldn't you do it on your marriage? Exactly. Like, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I will say, I got the one thing that really annoyed me in this movie was, you know, that scene where like they line up against each other uh, at the beach, and <laughs> yeah, then, I know like, exactly well, everyone what strips off. The women are all so hot, and so the men are hot. fucking hideous, mm -hmm. and it's the double, double standards. standards of Hollywood <laughs> that just fill me with rage. Is that you've got like four of like super banging women just standing there, and yeah. then you got fat Vince Vaughn fat um favreau it's just fucking like yeah. oh what and not to fat shame anyone it's just no, like no, these are women who are supposed to be what in their like mid to late 30s mm, and mm. they have to have like yoga bods um yeah just to be in the industry yeah no it's insane and like it's the fact as well that um that that um uh, uh that that marlon ackerman is supposed to have had two kids like Okay. Wow, genetically <laughs> superior human being. If she has had two kids and still keeps it that ridiculous, yeah, yeah. So that that upset me greatly. But the rest of the movie, I loved. Like the scenery, exceptional. The actual story, exceptional. The comedy, not racist, not homophobic, just genuinely yeah. funny. Yeah, I genuinely enjoyed this movie. Like, mm. and honestly, this resort looked. Oh my incredible god. oh my god like like damn i think i needed to go to to, to, to island east man yeah the new singles thing <laughs> <laughs> stay in your little cabin with like a little window to the water below how brilliant. fun that looks it's superb i wonder where it actually was and like how much yeah. tickets are and things i want to go damn expensive Chad, let's but I go be there. let's let's that's where our first show is for uh -huh. the we'll make it a mandatory show for everyone on the island they have to come for our one listener in Hawaii. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, like, I mean, wh wh how, how, is there anything that you particularly didn't like about this film? Like, what were your, yeah. Uh, oh, oh, what, there was, I had a question for you and it keeps like yeah. popping up in my brain and then disappearing and then popping up in my brain again. It was, how, what did you feel? That was it. What did you feel about Vince, Vince Vaughn's reactions to John Favreau's cheating on his wife and like, Obviously, in that scene, John Favreau's character wants to tell Vince Vaughn's character that he's cheating on his wife, mm -hmm. and Vince Vaughn's character's like, "Don't tell me because if you if I if if you tell me, then I have to tell your wife. If I yeah. don't know, then what what are your feelings towards that well, in terms I of like the whole, cheating and and that?" I thought the whole interaction was very interesting because it essentially boils down to Vince Vaughn being like, "Why the fuck are you cheating on your wife?" Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Like, this is someone who puts up with your shit. This is someone who loves you. Like are you gonna find that in some hot 23 year old mm -hmm. like you seem to think like i think this is a really interesting example of you know men supporting women <laughs> <laughs> and i know his wife cheats on him too like she's not mm -hmm. like a perfect paragon of wifeliness who's a victim in all this yeah. but i do think yeah. it's interesting in men being like dude why are you being such a fucking sleazebag Mm -hmm. Do you realize how lucky you are? Do you understand <laughs> how hot your wife is? <laughs> You're never going to do better. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. And yeah, it's it's a weird sort of thing. I mean, like from sort of like from 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 having conversations with people and and things like like the best thing to do in that situation once you found out like someone is cheating on 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 someone that you know is to give them that ultimatum and say either you tell them or I yeah. do, because in that way, you're giving them the choice. Either yeah. they're going to do it themselves and be courageous and do that thing, or they're going to cow it out, in which case you have the moral obligation to teach them. Yeah. It's not a case of you don't even talk to them about this and then just go and tell, you don't keep it yeah. secret. That is 
the sort of the best way to handle that situation. Yeah. And I think I wouldn't say not doing that was a failing of Vince Vaughn's. I think he's trying his hardest to like really in that situation be the best for bo- both parties yeah. in, 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 in terms of like how he handled that and, and also like keep it off his own back as well, because he's got his own problems to deal with as well. And like, yeah. while he's trying to be a good friend, like, you know, you've got to tend your own garden before you, you yeah. can help someone else, I guess. So it's, like for such a weird little stupid film this film actually goes real deep yeah it it touches and i mean at the same time like mullen ackerman is doing the exact same to his wife like being like why yeah, are you yeah, hitting yeah. on the yoga instructor like what <laughs> <laughs> what's your goal here <laughs> yeah. i feel so bad i laughed really hard during the scene with the yoga instructor He's great. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we are going to do downward dog with a tantric hip thrust. And I know, like, I know it's, you know, very molesty, mm. but I think it's the fact that it's, like, so blatant. It's not like this creepy, like, oh, I'll touch her butt while no one's looking. Mm. Like, it's <laughs> in front of their husbands. Um, <laughs> just, like, you need to go deeper. <laughs> like, the best way I can describe it, and this isn't this isn't nationalist at all, but it's very Italian. <laughs> <laughs> I just like I was like, this is really wrong. Like it's obviously not okay, but it's it made me laugh. I think also like you know, no one was looking uncomfortable. They were just like, what? The, what is happening to me right now? It's the now? fact that as well, like that guy was like slapping the dude's asses as well, and just be like, encouragement. <laughs> like he's great. And like, like the fact that he's always swimming, and the and the women are just like, does he think he's a mermaid? Like <laughs> that shit was funny. It was brilliant. Yeah, I think they managed to make it like he was the joke the whole time. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Exactly. It wasn't a case of ha ha. We're laughing at sexual assault. We're yeah. laughing. You know. Yeah. At this so, ridiculous man. <laughs> You know what? It's a tight hour and a half. It's brilliant. It does some great issues, and yeah. the cast is exceptional. I mean, oh, don't so get me wrong. Fun. I'll never, I'll never forgive John Favreau for for directing uh, the live action Lion King. That man is dead to me now. <laughs> but apart from that, like, great, great cast. Um, the woman who plays Trudy, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> Callie Hawk was so <laughs> funny just the fact that she insists on calling him daddy the whole yeah. time <laughs> and he's so uncomfortable <laughs> it's great it's so good and she, oh, man. you know they, they see her at the singles resort and she's like pour it in my mouth Love her. <laughs> she's just <laughs> she's the perfect 20 year old like that she's so good <laughs> Oh, no, I love this movie. It's great. Um, is there a scene that could have saved it for you? Um, gosh. I think I would have liked to see Kristen Bell and Jason Bateman more, like, work on mm-hmm. their shit more, because I thought that their relationship was really, really interesting. And yeah. it's just sort of resolved, like, they hook up in a closet, and now it's all fine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and yeah. would've, I don't know, it would have been nice to, to see maybe a bit more work on that closure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, absolutely. Absolutely. Because I think, I mean, that was the whole reason they yeah. were there, I guess. So like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah for, for me, I just, I, I guess like, I always get annoyed eventually with Vince Vaughn in films. Yeah. Um, because he just doesn't change. And I just would have really liked to see, you know, obviously he, he, he starts to understand like where, where his wife is coming from and everything. But even so, the way he does it is very sort of domineering. Yeah. And, and and I just would have really liked to see him kind of just chill a little bit and just, you know, open up a bit more yeah. to her and have a little bit more character development. Because, yeah, even even in his trying to be with his wife in that romantic kind of way is yeah. very sort very of Vince about Vaughan. him. Yeah, it's way too Vince Vaughn. Yeah. So, yeah, but that's that's about it, because otherwise, I friggin' I love this movie so I much. I still maintain that Vince Vaughn's performance in True Detective Season 2 was... What? Even? Incredible. I mean, a whole other side to him I didn't know he had. I'm still obsessed no. to this day. It's uh, There must be something about True Detective, like mm. either the writing, the Bringing directors, the or something. Yeah. But it really makes these, like you know, mediocre actors like Matthew McConaughey and Vince Vaughn just do a complete 180. Maybe you have to have, like, that double double letter, the, the, the alliteration yeah. name in order to yeah. do well. Like, maybe that's the combination. 
because Woody Harrelson has always just been a fantastic actor, so yeah. you don't worry about him. <laughs> so, so who knows who we're going to see next? So, would you watch this again? Um, you know, if it's on and I'm flipping channels, like I'll leave it on. I wouldn't, I think, mm-hmm. seek it out. Just it's not really the kind of movie that like I'd throw on for a fun night, right. you know? Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, I like if someone was like, "Hey, I want to watch this movie. Are you keen?" I'd be like, "Sure." Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like I think I think this is a this is a great movie to watch. Like it's it's actually kind of perfect to watch Heartbreak Kid first and then watch this. Yeah. Just to see what an actual good relationship should look like. Yeah, I think that was also the thing is I watched Heartbreak Kid first. So pretty much anything no, after yeah, that, yeah. I was like, Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is fine. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, like, I don't know. I, I, I really like this movie, mm-hmm. but I, I, th- I completely agree with you. It's not one of those movies where you can just sit down and be like, you know what I feel like watching yeah, more than anything retreat. else in the world right now? Couples Retreat. But it's just, in its little bubble, it is fantastic. There's nothing wrong with this film. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So, I, yeah, I would definitely watch it again, but don't know when. Just don't know when. <laughs> well, Simone, ma- what is, what is, is, is Mahalo thank you in... Hawaiian? I don't, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I only did like, I only did like a couple months of Hawaiian. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. It's more than me. So, I don't know. But congratulations. Yeah. Okay, well, yeah thank, thank you very much. Thank you for, for, for going on this wonderful journey of what a good relationship should be while on vacation. Also slash the Marlon Ackerman episode. Yes. We, you know, could Surprise. be either one. Who knows? Yeah. So how was your week and what is your optimistic thing? My week is good. Like I said um, before mm-hmm. we started recording, you know, just one of those weeks where you feel like you're not getting anywhere, like you're not getting anything mm-hmm. done, but you're tired. Yeah, yeah. It feels like you've been doing everything, but if someone asked you, what have you done this week? You're like, um... Fuck no. Yeah. <laughs> you're a bit more aggressive than I am when I answer <laughs> questions, but we've always known that. <laughs> Uh, you know, you're, I don't know what what have I been doing this week? <laughs> I wish I knew. <laughs> so, uh, what so about what, you? Um, yeah, I mean, my week's been fine. Didn't, didn't I mean, just the usual private kind of things. What I'm what I'm loving about this whole COVID thing, something that no one has ever really said ever, is that a lot of things like a lot of webinars, uh, well, a lot of seminars, a lot of um, uh, job fairs, a lot yeah. of uh, vacation schemes, which are usually done in person, are now all done online. So I'm attending sort of seminars and shit like that and, and, and vacation schemes that yeah. would not have been available to me had the co- co- coronavirus not hit. So I'm getting like a shit ton more experience than I would have normally. Yeah. So like, I'm super grateful for that aspect of it obviously people die not great not happy about that wish we could have a coherent government strategy that would just solve all this nonsense but you know small draws of that but my optimistic thing comes out of south africa this week oh while i was listening to the financial times podcast they were talking about this wonderful church in south africa where they feel that yeah i can see simone's face for our listeners is just like What's going to what happen? Have we done? I'm so scared. So there's a church in South Africa that believes that the only way to get to God is through consuming lots of alcohol. Now, obviously, for our non-South African listeners, you don't know this, but you might not know this, but South Africa has a countrywide ban on alcohol. You cannot get it anywhere, which is why Simone cannot divulge where somewhere. she gets her sources. Yeah, yeah. You can get it, so, sorry, unlawfully get it somewhere. <laughs> So they had this, this, this feature article on, uh, on this South African church and it's the best thing ever because the, the pastor is like, we completely support the government. We completely support their decision to ban alcohol. It's completely understandable. And we told our congregation that they must just get drunk at home and come to church with God and love in their bellies. And then they just like start cheering and praising God. So it's just like, he was just great. He was just like, we must consume the alcohol at home and then come to church with God in our bellies. Hallelujah. <laughs> and I fucking loved it. It was that, so heartfelt and warm and That is beautiful. the South African spirit. I, and I just thought that was Alcoholism and optimism. <laughs> It was absolutely perfect, and that is my optimistic thing. Like I have thought about that so often. I've just got in my belly, hallelujah! And it just makes me so happy. 
Oh God. Okay. Well, you know, whenever someone's like, oh, the story out of South Africa, I'm like, what did we do? (laughs) (laughs) It's usually never good, but this time it was fantastic. Oh, Oh, man. All right. What are we going to do next week, Simone? I'm so excited to hear any thoughts that you have. What are we going to do next week? (laughs) No, no ideas. (laughs) Okay. Um, actually, I was thinking of, um, action movies of 2020, because I know Blood Rain sneakily came oh, out, no. and it bombed. I'm not surprised. Okay, yeah. let's see what other action movies of 2012 there are. Uh, 2012? Mm. 2020. That's this year. Did you hear that Mulan is going to be put on Disney+, Plus and for you like, have to buy it for $30? Everyone's going to legally download it. Come on, guys. I mean, right? Like... Ooh, how did Underwater do? Because that's our girl, Christian... Oh, it was, I think it was, like, a surprise, like, pretty fun. Ooh. Let's have a Luke. Luke. Oh, sorry, Bloodshot, not Blood Rain. I I knew which one you meant with that horrible man. (sighs) It got 48%, we could do it. Oh, okay, sure. So, Underwater. And Bloodshot. Okay. Which okay. one would you prefer to do? Uh, you know what? I will do Bloodshot. I will take that bullet. Wow, that is a that is a bullet. Okay. Uh, underwater forty eight. I'm just gonna look up what Bloodshot got quickly. Vin Diesel. Thirty percent. Nice, lovely. Do you want to lead me in again? Oh yeah, thirty percent. Okay, cool. So, Simone, what are we going to do next week? We are getting a little more contemporary, and we're going to cover the action movies that snuck in this year while we weren't paying attention and just filled with existential dread. (laughs) It is one of those genres where if everything is going to shit, it's something that you never want to watch. Why? Why would you? (laughs) Life is hard enough. Watch a comedy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think, uh, to be fair, all movies this year have really, like, it's got to suck to come out this year as a film, right? Like, oh, man. Yeah, yeah. So so this week, we, well, next week, we're going to be doing Underwater with mm-hmm. uh, Kirsten Stewart, which got a very close 48%. So mm-hmm. we can still do it, even though it was almost it there. It got, like, kind of good reviews on the horror mm. subreddit. Hmm. I think so, it's because people hate Kirsten Stewart for no reason. Like, they're just so mean to her. Yeah, they need to get over it. So I'm, I'm interested yeah. to see. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm excited, mm-hmm. actually. Yeah, and then we're doing Bloodshot, which is Vin Diesel! Our boy! Vin Diesel. <laughs> and that got 30%. So, yeah. I d- yeah, this, sh- this should be an interesting one. You know what? Action movies of 2020, let's mm-hmm. bring it on. I'm let's very go. excited. Yeah. Well, guys, thank you so much for listening. We really, really appreciate it. We hope your relationships are going well. If they are yeah. going well, I hope they've been peaceful if they're not going well. And you know what? This is a real tough time to be in a relationship yeah. if you live with the okay. person because, damn, you're being around them the whole time. That can't be easy. But you know what? You are loved. There are people out there who love you. You mm-hmm. are not alone and you are a fantastic golden shining light and never ever believe that that's not true um but if you are having any uh you know any any no gonna start them again mm. uh because yeah that was you could tell that was going down the wrong way um you but guys, took off if you without a wanna, landing yeah <laughs> but guys if you want to reach out to us about movies that you're watching about um what you deal with to solve your marital pro- marital mm. problems because we are not psychologists so we can't solve them but we'd love to hear from you we love your suggestions it's always good to hear from other people about how they do what they do and where can they do that simone they can talk to us on Facebook or Instagram at Fresh Tomatoes Podcast, on Twitter at Fresh Tomatoes MP. They can email us at Fresh Tomatoes Podcast at gmail.com. They can check out our website. Link Boom. down below. Link down below. Guys, thank you so much for listening. We really appreciate it. And while you're out there, you know, meeting that one person that you're allowed to meet, tell them about our podcast. It really, really helps us get up there, get those algorithms working in our advantage. We really, really need it. You guys, but, I had a dream last night that Lizzo tweeted about our podcast. And if we all visualize it, it will manifest. Damn straight. That's the that's what the secret tells us. And if you guys can help us reach out to Lizzo, we would very much appreciate it. That would change our lives. Please, guys, fulfill Simone's dreams. But even if you don't... 
As we say at the end of every episode, we love you and there's nothing you can do about it. We love you and there's nothing you can do about it. Goodbye. Goodbye.